from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 10th, 2024. The IDF continues its battle against terror group Hamas in Gaza, eliminating Hamas terrorists, including today the IDF said three Hamas terrorists who it said were on their way to carry out terrorist activities in the central area of the Gaza Strip. The three were the sons of the head of Hamas's political bureau, Ismail Haniya. The IDF said one of the sons was a cell commander in Hamas's military wing, the other two brothers, both Hamas military operatives. The IDF also said today that it struck a military infrastructure that, based on precise intelligence, was used by the Hezbollah terrorist organization on the Syrian front, saying it holds the Syrian regime accountable for all activities that take place within its territory and will not allow for any attempted actions which could lead to the entrenchment of Hezbollah on the Syrian front. The status of a U.S. proposal that is on the table that would see a reported six-week ceasefire in Gaza for the release of hostages now held for 187 days remains unclear. We had told you yesterday that the proposal had been handed to Hamas with the U.S. awaiting its response. The Wall Street Journal reported today that Hamas has largely rejected the proposal, though that has not been confirmed. Speaking yesterday to the press, U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan put the onus on Hamas when he was asked about President Biden's efforts to help reach a deal, which Biden had said he hoped to reach before the end of Ramadan. The reporter, noting Ramadan now coming to a close, asked Sullivan, what does that say about the president's ability to bring about peace? I think it says more about the fact that you have a party, Hamas, who is holding innocent people, uh, that it took hostage a long time ago, doesn't get a lot of attention, unfortunately, in the commentary, and I've said that from the podium before. And uh, there could be a ceasefire in place today that would extend for several weeks to be built upon longer if Hamas would be prepared to release some of those people. So uh, let's train the attention where it belongs, which is that the world should say at this moment to Hamas, it's time, let's go, let's get that ceasefire. We're ready. I believe Israel is ready, and I think Hamas should step up to the table and be prepared to do so as well. President Biden shared his support for a ceasefire and a hostage deal at a joint press conference today alongside Prime Minister Kishida Fumio of Japan, also noting the recent threats from Iran. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Let me say it again, ironclad. We're going to do all we can to protect Israel's security. Vice President Kamala Harris met yesterday with families of American Israeli hostages, where the White House said the vice president underscored that President Biden and she have no higher priority than reuniting the hostages with their loved ones. Also reaffirming the White House said the U.S. commitment to bring home the remains of those who have been tragically confirmed to be deceased. The vice president again condemned Hamas as a brutal terrorist organization and its horrific use of sexual violence reaffirmed. She said that the threat Hamas poses to Israel must be eliminated and denounced the rise of anti-Semitism worldwide. While well, new legislation to counter anti-Semitism was introduced today, the Bipartisan Bicameral Countering Anti-Semitism Act is said to be the most comprehensive legislation to date to counter domestic anti-Semitism and protect Jewish communities in the U.S. It is sponsored by Representatives Kathy Manning and Chris Smith and Senators James Langford and Jackie Rosen who noted the bill includes a first-ever national coordinator to lead an interagency task force to counter anti-Semitism. American Jewish Committee CEO Ted Deutsch said the surge of anti-Semitism in the U.S. is an urgent threat to Jews and to all Americans, a threat which has only grown more severe since Hamas's October 7th massacre in Israel. Welcoming the new legislation, he said we are grateful to these congressional champions for taking decisive action to fight anti-Jewish hate 
and preserve our democracy. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, April the 10th at 7 o'clock, David Harris speaks with Egyptian author and activist Dalia Ziada about her outspoken support for Israel and condemnation of Hamas since October the 7th. At 7.30 on Israel Outside In, Benjamin Anthony is put through a special forces prep course on the beaches of Israel and takes a walking tour of Tel Aviv's Carmel Market. At 8, Robert Siegel explores the current status of the Israel-Hamas war with Dennis Ross, Gaith Alamari, and Natan Sachs. At 9, the late Senator Joseph Lieberman is on the Chaim. At 10, a replay of Israel Outside In, and at 10.30, an encore of this newscast. Coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, April the 10th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader, Am Yisrael Chai.